going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're recreating the look from Wes Anderson's Moonrise Kingdom. Wes Anderson is one of my favorite directors and storytellers. Growing up, me and my dad would always watch his films and we would often watch a lot of the director's cuts of his films where Wes would pretty much sit down next to you and tell you all about the film, what went into it, the thoughts and the decisions they made on set, the pre-production, and it was an incredible experience to see that much thought go into a film. And it was really the first time I was ever introduced to the concept and the importance of color in cinema. And my dad would always tell me that color is a character. And I think all those things combined really had a massive impact on who I am and the work I do today. Ever wonder how to turn your SDR grade to HDR? In addition to that, this free webinar includes proper workflow to using Hollywood's most used film print emulation, custom techniques to stress testing your LUTs, future proof LUTs for HDR and ASUS workflows. Learn to balance your footage in seconds with printer lights. Secrets to building an HDR-ready note tree. Prepping Dolby Vision trim for Netflix. Pro tip when saving a power grade. I will end the session with an extended Q&A. These questions came from you guys. Click the link in the description to sign up for this free training. Now I know you guys have been loving the look recreations lately and then we have a ton more on the way. So be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification so you don't miss an upload. Be sure to follow us on Instagram. And with that, let's roll the intro. Let's jump right into it. So this is a Moonrise Kingdom look recreation here. Um, and I, I do want to continue to explain sort of what this is for. I am not showing you the way Wes Anderson shot this or the way that he uh, developed the film that he shot it on because this was shot on actual 16 millimeter film. The steps we're taking here are obviously not what Wes Anderson and, and their creative team took to get this look. Um, there was months and months of preparation to you know, just choosing the wardrobe, choosing the elements and frame, choosing the props, the location. And we're just working with a random clip that we found that has somewhat similar colors and somewhat similar framing. So by no means am I saying this is the way that they achieved it here. What we're doing again is I want to demonstrate a way that you can take a, a pretty wide array of footage, bring it into Resolve, compare it with a reference, and either use that reference as just an inspiration, maybe try and just pull certain elements from that inspiration uh, and try and bring it into your own work, trying to somewhat push our image into this world. Just a little bit, just a little bit. But don't forget, there's a whole lot more than just the colors in the frame that go into creating the mood. The, the color is kind of just the finishing step, the icing on the cake. So with that being said, let's go ahead and analyze this frame. I'm just gonna drop on our color palette here and we're just gonna see what we have to work with. So as you see, it's a bunch of pastels, and that's really what Wes Anderson's known for is his color palettes and his pastel color palette that he tends to lean with. Um, you see a lot of browns in the shadows, these burnt oranges, some very earthy greens. In the midtones, we have sorta neutrals, nothing's ever pure white with him. Uh, if you look at the parade over here, you'll see we have this green and red channel sitting up top, and the blue's pretty much crushed. So we're getting this very warm, earthy tone overall. Um, and this, this bottom line of tones here uh, continues to help demonstrate that. Very dark brown right here, very, very just pure brown. And then this, I think, is pretty similar to that tone we see in the sky. There's not much contrast here in the sky. It's kind of overcast day, but you'll notice that those, those highlights are not pure white. They're very tinted. Um, and you can see that again just by the blue channel being so far below the red and the green channel over here. And then same for this frame, just another one to pull up for reference. We're gonna look at all three. Again, you see that consistency. We have a little bit more red here in this frame, obviously, just because of these little flags, these police lights in the background. Um, but pretty, for the most part, I mean, there's more sky in this one, but everything still stays the same. It's, it's the same setting and everything, um, same color palette, of course. And then if we go to this frame here, I'm just drag on this one more color palette. Again, very neutral in the mid. A lot more of this image is sitting in the highlights. So we see that sort of muted, tinted sky, just kind of carrying all the way through the midtones. And then of course the browns and those burnt oranges, earthy greens that make up the colors of their attire, their hats, their skin, and all that just really blends together nicely. So we're gonna see what we can do to achieve that result with our clip, which is this one right here. So what we do have working for us is we have a lot of overcast sky in the background. We have her in this green and yellowish field, which is gonna help us get similar tones uh, from our reference. And then her top is also this sort of yellow mustard color that we're gonna be able to somewhat match to this briefcase or the suitcase right there. So we're gonna use that as inspiration as an anchor 
And then of course, matching skin, sky, and the grass around her. That's the main elements we want to match here. So we're gonna pick a hero frame, and this right here looks pretty good. And I'll go ahead and pull up our still, just do a side-by-side. -side. Uh, Moonrise Kingdom was shot on 16 millimeter film. And of course, with that comes the heavy grain, the heavy halation, the beautiful contrast, those protected highlights. So we're gonna bring some of those elements back in, but some of them I'll leave out just for more of a creative decision. So to get started, I'm gonna go ahead and build out our node tree. We're gonna keep this one pretty simple. We're gonna do most of this look in two or three nodes. And then we're just gonna add a couple extra nodes at the end of the node tree just to dial in some more of that film elements, the, the grain, that glow, and a little bit of the softening there. So first thing we're gonna be adding is our offset. And then we're gonna have a CST node followed by some look adjustments. And then we're gonna have a curves node. And then next up, we're gonna have our film LUT. We're gonna have our glow, our softening, and lastly, our grain. So clearly we are keeping things pretty simple. And the reason for that is that you want it to be something that applies. Uh, we're mainly handling primaries, not really doing a lot of secondaries here because we're just building a look. We want it to be able to work pretty freely with, with other shots, with other scenes, with other cameras. So my first step is always to go into the CST. And here we're gonna go ahead and actually add our color space transform effect here. And because this was shot on a Blackmagic Pocket camera, we're gonna set our input color space to Blackmagic Pocket 4K Film Gen 4. And then input gamma is also going to be pocket 4k film gen 4. For our output color space we're going to leave that to use timeline and the timeline color space is rec 709 gamma 2.4 and a davinci yrgb uncolor managed project. The output gamma is going to be we could set it to rec 709 but because we're using that that film LUT later on we need to set it to cineon film log because the film LUT is expecting a cineon film log input. So to add that LUT in we're going to right click on our film LUT node and scroll to LUT and then in film looks, we can't see it because we are cropped in too far. So you guys can actually read these letters. So I'm gonna move everything up and then right click on that film LUT node, scroll to LUT, film looks, and we're gonna select the Rec. 709 Kodak 2383 D55 version. The reason for that is that it's a warmer variant of this LUT and we do need the warmer version because if you look at our reference, it's very warm. So by nature, we want to use the warmer version of that film print LUT. So that handles the actual color space transform and getting our image from log to a proper Rec. 709 look, but you notice it's a little bit overexposed. So we're gonna fix that in our offset. So we're gonna take our offset and bring the entire image waveform down. And we're getting a little bit closer here, but you may notice we're kind of crushing the shadows in a way that's not very pleasing. And again, that's because we're operating beneath that CST. So sometimes if you take that offset too far, we're gonna to add too much contrast in the shadows. And so you can fix that by taking your contrast slider again in that first node, and then pull this back just a little bit and continue to refine that in your pivot right there. So now before and after the offset adjustment, we just kind of balance the shot overall, balance the exposure and match contrast. And now we're looking pretty good to go ahead and start moving into more of our look development phase. So my next step is actually going to be going into our input sizing. And I just want to zoom in a little bit and pan this over. So we have a little bit better sizing for our reference image and our shot that we're working on. So moving on to our look node, the first thing here we want to adjust is our gain. It's a little bit too bright. Our sky is too bright. And so we're just going to pull this down a little bit. We're going to kind of spend this first little bit matching exposure. So bringing the sky down, that works in the gain, but now our midtones are a little bit dark. So we're gonna take our gamma and pull this up. And we're just gonna bounce back and forth until we get to our place we like. And then we're gonna to go to our lift, pull this down slightly. Bring it up the gain a little bit. And now if we disable this look node, we're getting our contrast much closer to our reference image. I actually just noticed that that frame we're sitting on was a little bit out of focus. We're just gonna scroll back and find a new hero frame. And right here is gonna be good. I'm just gonna pan this over a little bit more. So now we've kind of got our exposure set. So we're gonna start working on some of the color palette here. So in our game, we're gonna try and match in the sky a little bit here. And we're gonna push a little bit more of that, that greenish tone into our gain. And similar to our exposure adjustments, we're gonna be bouncing back and forth here. I was trying to match things. We've got a lot of red in the midtones in our reference, so we'll try and bring that back here as well. Really push this too far. And then come back and balance it out in the gain. And this is also super tricky on mouse and keyboard. It's a little bit quicker to do this uh, using the panel. I'll take our gain and pull this down a little bit again. Because we do have an overcast day, and so we want it to feel like that. Our skin's a little bit too orange here, so we're just going to take our gamma and move this towards magenta. 
And that's not looking too bad right there, honestly. I think next thing we want to do, maybe in our lift, we'll cool this off just slightly. Right there will do. So one thing you notice is if we go ahead and go into our split screen mode, reset our input sizing, just to the look node right here, we've already gotten things super close and a lot of the other elements have already started to fall into place. Our skin's looking more similar, her top is already matching the suitcase a bit more, and our grass is starting to look a little bit more similar. Now we're not there yet, but it's important to start with your primaries before going to secondaries. So the broader paintbrush, the bigger paintbrush you can use at the start, the better. So you wanna start big and work your way down. So we've done our big paintbrush here, we have our look off to a great start, and now we're gonna jump into our curves and make some more somewhat secondary adjustments uh, using our custom curves and our hue versus curves. So we'll jump to our hue versus luminance curve, Curves, and we'll just add a couple default points and I'm gonna add a second point here just left of that yellow anchor and this is to somewhat protect our skin because you see this is kind of heavily getting that jacket but it's also in the skin and we don't really want it to affect the reds more so just the yellows so we're gonna select this yellow point here and just gain this up not very far here especially since our points are so close together we wanted to kind of protect it as best we can so before and after here very small change now, does this change actually get us a better image? That's gonna depend on your project, but here I really wanna match things as close as I can uh, for the sake of the tutorial. But if it was a real world project, I might not do this actual step, even if I was using you know, Moonrise Kingdom as a reference image. So because we're getting into our secondaries now, I do wanna go ahead and add that glow before we go any further. And the reason for that is that the glow somewhat does affect the look of our image. And so I don't want to make certain adjustments before adding the glow and not know how that glow is going to affect it later on. So we're gonna set our shine threshold to zero. We're gonna set our composite type to soft light. And then right off the bat, we're gonna take our global blend and then pull this down quite a bit. I don't wanna use it too heavy. I just wanna right around here, right around 0.28. And then we're gonna use our colorize tool. We're gonna to actually pull up our reference again. Input sizing, gonna shift this left. And we're gonna set this to kind of give this, this glow a little bit of that warm yellow cast. And we'll also add a little bit of red here, so it's pushing a little bit of red into the skin. So we said OK. And now if we disable and re-enable our glow, it kind of puts this color overlay into the image in just a super soft way. Uh, and again, that, that glow node is kind of a trick I use on most of my grades. Uh, it's optional, but I like the way it looks. I like the result it has here. And uh, obviously, I want to keep it in. All right, so now let's pan our image over left a little bit. And I want to try and match the grass here. Actually, if we go side by side, you'll see this a little bit better. Um, our grass is a little bit too green in our reference, so we're going to go back into our curves node. And here we're going to go into hue versus hue, set our default anchors. And I'm going to take our yellow anchor, shift this left again to protect the skin. And we're just going to set a new point here, kind of in this green area. And I'm going to rotate this up to give our green grass a little bit more warmer tone. It may be hard to see. We're going to zoom in the best we can. I just want to show you right here. This is where kind of where we started, and we're just giving it a little bit warmer cast. And that's looking pretty good right there. Not very far, not a big change, just enough to make a difference. We'll go back into our split screen, actually, and we're just going to try and add some saturation here to our yellows. All right, so that's not too bad. We're going to go back into our look node, and now I want to start working on matching the sky a little bit better. So to control the changes we're making, I'm actually going to go from our primaries wheels to our log wheels. And looking at the waveform, I do want to highlight this node and see that our sky is mostly right here above 0 0.49, 0 0.48. So we're going to take our high range on our log wheels and pull this to right around 0.48. And so now if we use our log wheels and we're moving this. For the most part, we are only affecting the sky. And that's exactly what we want. So we'll turn off that highlight so we can see everything, go back to our split screen, and we're just gonna make some small adjustments to the sky here using the log wheels. So I see it needs to be a little bit more blue. So we're gonna take our highlights wheel and cool this off a little bit, and then take our exposure, come down slightly. And that's not too bad right there. Now using our mid-tone slider, we're gonna push a little bit more red into the mid-tones. Pulling directly up here. That's pretty good. And then for our shadows, they're fairly neutral as is. I don't know if I really want to make any changes here. But if anything, we can maybe pull it a little bit green, a little bit yellow. Then back to the midtones, just pulling in a little bit more red still. Actually, we're kind of taking this towards magenta almost. So that's looking pretty good if we disable and re-enable our look node. And that, that really does a lot right there. 
So the last two steps here are going to be adding in those film elements. And that's going to be our softening on our grain. So for our soften node, I'm going to add a OFX here and we're just going to add a Gaussian blur on this node here. We're going to have these linked and we're going to pull this back. Actually, we're going to go ahead and zoom in pretty far here. Just want to kind of match sharpness the best we can. So we're going to keep that, that blur turned up a little bit here, right around 0.15. And then we're also going to take our midtone detail. We're going to pull this back to around negative 15. That's going to help give us a little bit more of that film look. And then the last step is going to be our grain. And here as well, we want to keep our reference pulled up so we can match the grain. Cause you notice we have a very saturated, pretty, I mean, present grain there. So that's not a step we want to leave out if you're trying to really recreate this look here. So we're going to set our preset to 16 millimeter 500 T. We're going to take our strength and just increase this, make sure we can see it maybe increase our texture slightly for our grain size, bring this up a little bit as well, because it is a pretty big grain. You can see it there in their skin. And we're going to saturate this grain quite a bit, not all the way right around 0 0.8, 0 0.7. And then for our softness, we'll increase this a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit more strength here. I mean, almost all the way on. And then for our advanced controls, we're going to take our midtones and just pull it down slightly in the midtones. And we'll leave that right there. Our size might be able to come down a little bit. That's a pretty close match. Only thing I'm seeing here, we could actually go into our log wheels again if we wanted to in our look node and just pull that exposure of the sky down slightly. But for the most part, I mean, that's a close enough match. If we put them side by side, they're very, very close. And I think the last thing I want to do, because I know these these yellows don't match perfectly. What I'd like to do is just in our curves and go to hue versus luminance again. I'm actually going to take this anchor over here and just delete it. And we're just going to have this broader yellow adjustment for our luminance. And right around here is going to be good. Back to our hues, kind of just making some small changes here to the hues. That's getting us much closer. And make sure we keep that that warm green. So now if we go to our split screen, you'll see we have a pretty good match overall. And the match may not be a one-to-one. -one. I mean, that's, that's a big trade-off there. Do you want the one-to-one -one match or do you want a look that's going to be useful? And obviously, you want a useful look. You want to build a grade for your project, not that one shot. So let's just land on our hero frame here. And we're just going to walk through this look step-by-step. -step. Starting off with our CST. Obviously here we just converted our camera space to Cineon film log and we have our film LUT here, which gets us back to break 709. This is our Kodak 2383 D55 look, which is the warmer film LUT here. And then our offset, this node coming before the CST, we just brought down the exposure and made some small tweaks to the contrast and pivot. Next up we have our look node and granted this is a big change in the overall look here, but all we did was work on our lift game again and our log wheels. Next up we actually skipped our curves node and we went down to our glow node, added the glow just so we can see the effect it had. And then we also tinted our glow to push that earthy tone into the image, which again matched our reference. And the next up we have our curves here. And this is where we just made a few adjustments in our hue versus luminance, hue versus sat and hue versus hue curves. And here we're just kind of pulling the greens out, pushing them to be a little bit more warm, bringing up the yellows and working on the skin a little bit. So next up we added a couple of film elements. We softened it up. So if we zoom in here, you'll see the effects of that Gaussian blur in the midtone detail just softening up the overall image. And then lastly, we finished it off with a very heavy and chunky grain because the original film still that we're referencing was shot on 16 millimeter film, which of course is known for that heavy grain. So let's go ahead and check out our final look. All right, that does it for this one, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Again, I do wanna stress the importance of the pre-production here. Whenever you're trying to recreate a look like this or go for that Wes Anderson vibe, so much of it is dependent on what's in frame, the set design and the wardrobe, all of it has to come together in that final step, which is the grading, for it to really have that Wes Anderson feel. So to reiterate, these look recreation tutorials are not meant to show you exactly how to get a one-to-one -one match. The purpose of them is show you how to pull inspiration from your favorite directors, from your favorite movie stills, and bring those elements into your own work. Don't forget we have that link down below for the free web in our training be sure to get yourself signed up and again guys if you're enjoying the content here be sure to smash that like button subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification so you're notified on every upload and with that i will see you in the next one